Hi again then guys and welcome to another circuit setup for Gran Turismo Sport. Now you're probably wondering, in the case of this car, it's a supercar, it's a very powerful one, it's my favourite car of this update, so why am I doing a circuit tune instead of a speed tune, like we did for the Huayra yesterday? Well simply put, it's because it's not a very quick car, <laughs> and that's very unfortunate. The SLR was always a bit slower in Gran Turismo 6, but the fact that the power is so much lower now, you can get it up to like 779, whereas in the previous game you could get it over a thousand, and it was still slower. So of course it's going to be slower now, you're looking at like the mid to high 250 region, which isn't bad, but it's certainly not as quick as you'd hope. So I decided to try out around a track instead. And that's exactly what we've done, and as it turns out, it's pretty good. Now I'm not going to say that this is the best thing out there, because of course you could tune something like a Corvette Stingray or a 911 GT3 up to N500 and potentially have a more nimble track car. The SLR is not a track car, it's a Grand Tourer. So of course it's not going to be the most nimble or the lightest thing out there, but this tune allows those of us who do love the SLR myself included, to at least have the option to use it in circuit racing rather than just as a straight line missile. So as far as the upgrades go, of course, balance of performance can change everything, but this is just N500 as a baseline. You can, however, increase the class if you want to and still use this tune, because it's predominantly for the handling. So I've dropped the weight as far as it can go, we've got the power to the peak of N500, which is 536 brake horsepower, traction control you definitely want turned off, trust me you don't need it even though it is rear wheel drive, the handling is more than heavy enough. We've got sports soft tyres, of course racing tyres are better, but as I've said before, if you can make a car good on sports tyres, then racing will be even better. Whereas if you build it on racing tyres and then have to use sports, it could go from really good to really bad. It's a very counterintuitive way of tuning if you fit racing tyres first. Now as far as the suspension, we've dropped the ride height as far as it can go. We've got the frequency quite high on 2.6, the anti-roll on 6 for the front and the back. For the compression side of the dampers, we've got 57 with 83 on the rebound, which is fairly low for the rebound on this one. We've got neutral camber and neutral toe. If you find that you need to give it a bit of camber, then by all means do so, but I don't think you will. As I said, the handling is pretty easy to to judge. It's not a slippery car at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. The rear downforce cannot be adjusted. As far as the diff, I would recommend halfway on initial torque and then the lowest acceleration and braking. As I've said pretty much every time, if you already know a setup that you prefer for rear-wheel drive or front-engine rear-wheel drive cars in particular, then by all means go for it. But if you want to try this, if you want to try something else, you can always come back and reset it if you find that it doesn't work quite as well. Then finally for the transmission, of course this is for N500, so if you give it more power you'll want to open up the gears a little bit more, make them longer, but we've got the fully customised transmission, an auto setting of 193 miles per hour, so of course you'll need to do the conversion if you're using kilometres, and as far as the gears themselves we've got 2.8, 1925, 1425, 1125 and 925 with a final drive of 3. You've only got five gears to work with, so having them a little bit longer isn't necessarily a bad thing, even with reduced power. So that's it for the tune. Of course, as I said, you can build it for different categories and feel free to experiment with different things for the suspension and the diff in particular. But of course, what you want to see is how this one actually compares to my other circuit builds. So to give you some idea of what this car is capable of, the laps that I did here ranged from beginning with a 148, then a 147.5, and then around a 147. So a pretty nice progression over three laps. As I said, it's not the quickest thing out there. You could definitely get other cars to be quicker, but that's, to be honest, not really down to the tuning. There are just certain cars that hit their limitations more quickly, and when you've got something like an SLR, and the same issue would apply to something like a Ferrari FF or a Bentley Continental, these bigger, heavier, more luxurious takes on an exotic, they hit that wall much more quickly. Than something like a, a super lightweight Noble or a TVR or a Lotus would. They simply have more trackability, generally speaking. So don't be worried by the fact that this car isn't destroying everything just because it's a supercar. That's not the way it works. However, 
It is quick. This is faster than my N500 circuit tune for the Viper SRT10 Coupe. So that's a pretty nice comparison, considering that the Viper is a similar vehicle. It has a similar shape, large engine, quite a hefty amount of weight, very torquey engine, just like this one. So as far as rivalries go, the car clearly has potential. It's expensive for what it is, but for those of us, as I said, who love the SLR, it's nice to be able to have a tune to allow you to race it on circuits and not just use it as a top speed car or just as a drag car. In fact, I would say this feels better around the track now than it did in GT6. So overall, if you do decide to use this tune or a variation of it, I hope you have a ton of fun with it. And of course, stick around on the channel for more and click here on screen to see literally all of my other tunes, drag, drift, circuit, sprint, all that kind of thing. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.